Apple made a big announcement on Tuesday about its new iPads for 2024. One of the highlights was the iPad Air, which stood out because of its powerful M2 chip. But the real star of the show was the iPad Pro. It features the groundbreaking M4 chipset, which Apple heavily promoted as a genuine alternative to a laptop. The M4 chip is built on a second-generation 3 nanometer process, which means it brings a lot more power to the table compared to previous versions. The iPad Pro has a 10-core CPU that's a whopping 50% faster than the M2. This means it delivers super-fast performance. But there's more to it. The M4 also has a 10-core GPU that can do hardware acceleration mesh shading and ray tracing. In fact, it's four times faster than the M2's GPU. These amazing hardware improvements have impressed a lot of people and have them fully supporting Apple's idea of the iPad Pro as a laptop alternative. As I look at the iPad Pro with its mighty M4 chipset, I'm in awe. Feeling a bit let down, I can't help but think about the incredible power and potential that's locked within the limits of iPad OS. But let's not focus on that for now. Instead, let's explore the top 5 features of this amazing device. This time, Apple introduced its groundbreaking M4 chipset alongside the latest iPad Pro. This cutting-edge processor uses 3 nanometer technology, which makes it more power efficient. It gives a remarkable 1.5x boost in CPU performance compared to the previous M2 chipset in the last iPad Pro. Also, the M4 chipset has an innovative display engine. It ensures superior precision, vibrant colors, and enhanced brightness on the stunning OLED Ultra Retina XDR display. Get ready to be amazed by the outstanding performance and visual experience offered by Apple's latest technology in the market. Apple has finally joined the AI trend by presenting the latest iPad Pro as an incredibly powerful device for artificial intelligence. According to Apple, the M4 chipset features their strongest neural engine yet, capable of an impressive 38 trillion operations per second. They confidently state that the neural engine on the M4 chipset surpasses the power of any PC available today, enabling the iPad to perform tasks at lightning speed. Additionally, Apple emphasizes the advanced frameworks on the iPad OS. Developers find it easy to tap into the neural engine's potential and add eye-catching capabilities like running diffusion or generative AI models directly on the device, thanks to the advanced frameworks on iPad OS. Apple's latest iPad Pro models have slimmed down due to the introduction of an OLED panel. The 11-inch version is now just 5.33 mm thick, while the 13-inch variant measures 5.1 mm not only that, but Apple has also managed to significantly reduce the weight of its iPad Air and iPad Pro models. Apple has made a groundbreaking move by introducing OLED panels to its iPad Pro lineup. The latest iPad Pro now features an OLED Ultra Retina XDR display with tandem OLED technology. This technology enhances full-screen brightness by combining light from two OLED panels. According to Apple, Tandem OLED technology not only makes photos and videos appear brighter but also maintains detail in shadows and low light while being more responsive to movie content. Apple has introduced a new version of iPad Pro accessories, including the Magic Keyboard and Apple Pencil Pro. The Magic Keyboard can be magnetically attached to the iPad Pro, and the Smart Connector eliminates the need to connect via Bluetooth. The new accessory includes a new function row with buttons like screen brightness and volume controls. It also features a larger trackpad, aluminum hinge, and palm rest. According to Apple, the new Magic Keyboard is designed to give the new iPad Pro a more MacBook-like feel. Meanwhile, the Apple Pencil has received its first major upgrade since 2018. The new Apple Pencil Pro comes with new features, including a squeeze gesture that lets users perform various tasks. Apple is also adding support for Find My to the Pencil Pro, allowing users to locate their misplaced accessory. Now, the real question is whether the iPad Pro M4 has outgrown iPadOS and is ready for macOS. The idea of bringing macOS to the iPad Pro is not new. Every time a new iPad Pro is revealed, there's a wave of people suggesting macOS on the go instead of just going along with the trend, I'm genuinely wondering if it's time for Apple to make a move. If they want to position the iPad Pro as a potential laptop replacement, they need to tackle the main hurdle, the lack of a laptop-grade operating system. While iPadOS is fine for a tablet and handles most tablet tasks well, it might not be enough for those seeking a laptop experience. Suggesting that an iPad OS-based device can replace a laptop is one thing, but if the iPad Pro wants to truly compete with laptops, it needs to offer everything that a laptop does, 
including macOS. It doesn't make sense to equip this device with cutting-edge technology like the M4 chip if it doesn't have access to cutting-edge software that can fully utilize it. The iPad Pro is clearly signaling that it wants to be treated like a laptop, from the new Magic Keyboard resembling a MacBook Pro's deck to the front camera orientation. The only thing lacking is an operating system designed primarily for laptops, rather than tablets, which is the case with iPadOS. Watching YouTube videos and playing games from the App Store aren't enough for a device aiming to replace a laptop. However, looking beyond just the surface of the issue, it becomes clear why immediately switching to macOS might not be the best decision. While iPadOS may have some limitations compared to macOS, it still functions effectively. When it comes to the MacBook, despite Apple's expertise and capacitive touchscreens, it seems they're ignoring the existence of two-in-one or touchscreen laptops, awkwardly glancing around whenever one passes by. Despite rumors and patents, a touchscreen MacBook has yet to go beyond the conceptual stage. As a result, macOS isn't optimized for touch, and the available software lacks in this regard. Although it's technically possible to install macOS on an iPad Pro, it's not a straightforward solution. If you always need a mouse and keyboard for full interaction, then what's the point? This is where the beauty of iPadOS shines through. It offers an instant-on, user-friendly solution for both entertainment and productivity that even a baby can navigate. Yes, you heard it right, babies use it too. Just imagine a baby trying to figure out how to access YouTube on macOS Sonoma. They wouldn't stand a chance. Won't someone please consider the children? Moreover, introducing macOS to the iPad Pro runs the risk of cannibalizing Apple's MacBook line by blurring the lines too much. How would the MacBook Air fare against a thinner, lighter, touch-enabled alternative that also supports the Apple Pencil? I highly doubt Apple is willing to find out. In the grand scheme of things, whether the iPad Pro is compatible with macOS or not doesn't really matter. The truth is, macOS isn't quite ready for the iPad Pro either. It's a nice idea, but the reality is that it would be like trying to force something that doesn't fit. It would need a huge overhaul of Apple's operating system, and right now, their focus is on integrating i into their platform. So, for now, the Stage Manager feature is the closest thing we have to a laptop-like experience on the iPad. It's useful to a certain extent, but it falls short when it comes to truly mimicking the desktop experience. Maybe a compromise could be a light version of macOS, a more advanced replacement for Stage Manager on the iPad Pro models within iPadOS. This idea isn't new, but it hasn't been put into action yet. Having a small portion of macOS on the iPad could serve as a valuable testing ground for Apple to encourage developers to add touch support and functions into their software. It could potentially pave the way for a future release of macOS on the iPad or even a MacBook Pro with a touch screen. In the end, it all boils down to personal perspective when it comes to using an iPad. So, what do you guys think about it? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. As I'm signing off, thanks for watching, have a great day, keep smiling, and I'll see you in the next one.